What are their arguments to, to defend these sweetheart deals that they have? Denial that they exist. Oops. I mean, the one that came here and tried to tell me I couldn't have a personal budget was that close to getting thrown out by her ears. Mm. Because what she failed to understand is that I knew more about it than she did. There are many people out there who are entitled to personal health budgets who know more about it than the nurse advisors. But when you get told you're not allowed to have it and, and I'm not going to allow you to have it, most people are afraid to take that extra Absolutely. next step yeah. and force the hand. We did. We forced the hand. And all of a sudden, there we go, personal health budget. And suddenly I'm in control of who provides my care, the quality of care I get, how frequently I get my care is assessed, not by an overworked, overburdened, underpaid social worker, but by a clinical nurse specialist who works as part of the district nurses. Somebody who's trained to recognise my need carries out my assessment. That's the way it should be. That's the way it always was. And that's what the white paper on personal health budgets was all about. Unfortunately, the vested interest and the sweetheart deal is still trying desperately to cling on to the power that is our health money. They don't want to let it go because they've got used to the holidays away, the free care for their families. The 200, one of them got a £200 bottle of brandy at Christmas because they put X amount of hours of care with an agency. Uh, what? Do you know, I just... Oh. Do you find out these things? Just ask. Yeah. They're not shy about telling you because there's nothing we can do. They don't care that we know. They just say... As long as they can keep going with yeah, it. Yeah. There is no shame in these people. They don't care that we know because there's nothing we can do. Because if we try and stop it at one site, it just carries on via another course. Because... We've got rid of the local authorities' ability to actually employ carers themselves. If we reintroduce that, suddenly all these people that are good quality carers but being paid a pittance and having to fight for every hour they get and being ordered to come in when they've got streaming flu, they're virtually crippled. If you don't come in, you won't get any more hours this week and you won't earn any money. And yet they're looking after vulnerable people. This is what we've done to our country. We've taken all the money out giving it to private companies, and we're surprised that they're behaving like McDonald's. Nothing against McDonald's, but we're surprised that care agencies look for the maximum dollar for minimum effort. And that's what care agencies are doing. And until we change it, we'll always be in that situation. And there will be another massive scandal with another stream of nursing homes being shut down through abuse. Because if you employ people on the lowest possible wage for the least possible hours give them the most possible responsibility you will end up with abused clients it's ipso facto i think i better stop there before mm -hmm. i um i think that oh might even have to go into three parts to be honest yeah but i'm sure people don't mind